hello, hola, or marhaba. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving for those who are watching this in from America, or from the United States rather. Um, I hope you had a great holiday. <clears throat> this video is going to probably come out on Saturday, but I'm doing it on Thursday. So there you go. That's why I'm wishing people a happy Thanksgiving. Um, so welcome to uh, another edition of Attempting to Paint. Today we're going to attempt to paint uh, from the Baratheon box set, the Stagnite Noble. As you know, I'm a huge fan of the Stagnites. I think that they're a severely underpowered uh, unit as it is now. It appears that as, the record, as of the recording of this video, there's going to be some really cool updates that are going to make the Stagnites really amazing, and I cannot wait for that to happen. Um... So yeah, so just join me in this video. As, as always, like, share, and subscribe. And also follow me on my Instagram at Cobra's Finest with a Z. And thank you again. Have a great day. So today we're going to paint my favorite non-cavalry unit in that attachment box. The Baratheon attachment box. The Ch Stagnite Noble. Which as you all know, if you follow me on Facebook, <laughs> I am... A huge fan of the Stagnites, even though they're completely underutilized because they're an expensive unit that doesn't necessarily get the... that has the right rules for it. <clears throat> I'm hoping that one day they... Simon will change it and make them a little bit more useful so you could see them more on the field. <clears throat> but alas, I mean, again, if they ever did do that change, I would have to, like, recalibrate my entire... Uh, internet personality. So we're going to start off with some Hasdreg Yellow for the cape. And if you follow any of my painting tutorial videos, you'll know that for the my Baratheon, since I'm mostly a Stannis player, I usually just use uh, yellow and gold. Um, this yellow for the yellow, and then, you know, Blood Angels Red for the red. To, because of the R'hllor faithful thingy, thingamajigger. I like to say that my stuff are R'hllor stagnites or whatever. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. I just like to paint them that way. But you can paint them however you want. Um, I just really like this yellow. Especially on top of the silver. The Tamiya silver. Again, if you watch my Champions of the Stag video. You will see that I like to use them both. This time, I did not actually put, um, I did not put a shade on these, on, on this model before I started painting. I just let the paint, the Tamiya paint dry and then started painting over with the contrast. Mostly because I didn't like the blotches that, that seemed to be pooling up. Um, that just might be me being heavy handed with the shade, which is totally on brand for me um but also just I, I i find that for some reason this particular paint that i bought um the tamia for some reason is not working as well with the sh null oil like i you know <clears throat> like it did for my tully cavaliers um because <clears throat> i painted them that way too with the silver base and uh, and all that good stuff. So now that we have that, we want to make sure that we don't have any of the pooling. And if we have any pooling, to try to minimize that. Even though it does have a really cool effect where you can really see it. And it looks like you've put some... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You've put some cool shadings on it already. But we are going to shade this anyway. And so here we have the cloak. Because again, we don't want our, our, our Baratheons to look like Silver Surfer. Even though um, Silver Surfer is a cool character and all that good stuff. But we want him to have a little bit of a personality. Not just so it looks like I just primed them and all of that. <clears throat> so here we are. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. 
And then for this portion, we're going to be very careful with that. Again, if it if you see it bleed a little bit into the into the silver plate, don't freak out. We're going to be able to put some lead belcher on the parts that yellow went on that we didn't really want yellow on. So don't don't freak out. <clears throat> so, there you go. So that's one pass through. Depending on how it dries, I might put another pass. I might do another pass through of or another coat. But so far, I like how this is going. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> Perfect. Okay, so the next beat we're going to do is we're going to take for our contrast uh, Wildwood, I think it's called. Where is it? I can't find it in my... Ah, here. Contrast Wildwood. Spelt randomly with a Y. Okay, and that's what we're going to do with the staff. On the hammer, because again, we don't want this to just look like you just primed it. You want to give the war hammers a little bit of a, you know, more realistic feel. Um, one of the things that I've seen with people who play Baratheon is that there's a lot of kit conversions and giving them swords. Because they say that the war hammer gimmick is a little goofy. I've said this once and I'll say it again. Um, I love the Warhammer aesthetic of the of the Baratheons. Actually, it's one of the real reasons why I actually uh, decided to to you know go with this as my secondary army. Um, even though I have more than enough Starks, uh, the the Warhammer piece of this is really like the the gimmick that really turn me on to the to the uh to the Baratheon set you know and you know I was like oh that's so cool that they are that they all have you know war hammers and everything like that and you know I I kind of like the fact that they're not they don't have uh swords but I don't know I guess it's to each their own <laughs> um for this pouch over here we're gonna just fill that with a little bit of the Okay, boom. <clears throat> okay. And there's another patch there that we're going to paint again with this. There you go. Sorry for shaking. There you go. So far, so good. And again, like I said before, I'm gonna probably I'm gonna put another co uh, coat of shade on some of these parts, just to kind of make it look a little bit more less shiny. <clears throat> I'm going to change my brush to a little, a brush that's a little bit thinner so I can do that little line for the, for the leather. There we go. To kind of break up the monotony of the 
of the silver. Oh, that's something that needs to be put. On closer inspection, I didn't realize that I could have put more yellow on part of this. My eyes are terrible. So there you go. Perfect. Okay, yeah, as you could see, and as I said in my Champion of the Stag video, one of the reasons why I love the Baratheons is the fact that they don't have a lot of... <clears throat> they don't have a lot of skin, so it's really just the silver plate that you got to worry about and making it look darker or whatnot. And I'm all about that. Anytime that I can do something where it's less work on faces, I'm all about... <laughs> Does it make me lazy? Most definitely. Do I care? Eh, not so much. <laughs> but we're going to try to put this brown here. Hopefully I don't mess it up for the strap. Again, like I said, ah, shit, I fucked it up. But like I said, don't freak out. We are going to put some, some nice uh, lead belcher, whatever it's called, to kind of even that out. And so, yeah, uh, let's see. For the horns, you know what? Let's try something new with the horns. I'm going to put some Ushbanti bone I'm gonna put some Zandri dust. See if I still if I still have some. Hmm. Well, I guess I don't have any. Lame. That's super lame. Oh well. So I guess I'm just gonna have to do the. The tried and true method of just putting Hazrak yellow on the horns. What a shame. Maybe hopefully I can run to the store when I do the other models and and get some Zandri dust and make them look like actual antlers. Or as close to antlers that I can do, you know, painting with my, you know, limited skills here. <laughs> See, that's why I call these videos attempting to paint, as you can see. Um, I don't claim to be a professional painter. I just doing this for funsies. And I just like to have models that are painted just a little bit better. J just a little bit better than, than not having them painted at all. Okay. So now we're going to put some null oil on here. To kind of not just dull the paint, but to kind of yeah, to dull it a little bit, to shade it, just to we're gonna start with the So yeah, so we're going to try to do it like that. Very simple. We don't want it to pull as much because we don't want that. It's no good. And one of the reasons why I love shades, man, it really does pop your models. 
it's just so good to see like it, it you know this took a couple of minutes to paint but it just looks so good Uh-oh. Yep. Should have waited to dry a little bit more. Oh, well. We'll figure it out. What was it Bob Ross used to say? Happy accidents or all that good jazz? Okay, so now I got to go fix that little yellow spot on the helmet and the, let's see, where's my handy dandy lead belcher? So you're going to notice that the lead belcher is a little bit darker than the Tamiya silver leaf, but that's okay because at the end of the day, we just want it to be a little bit blended anyway. And, you know, unless someone's really looking at you or looking at your model, they're not going to really notice it just off the bat so sorry I'm gonna just do this off camera because it's a little bit more There you go. Perfect. Okay. So see with this, the, uh, the addition of a little bit of shade. Let me just turn. Oh, it's not going to be that good. There you go. So then you could take your models from this. Or from this, rather. You know, see, so just primed and, you know, ready to go to this. We're going to let this one dry and I'm going to paint the other one off camera and then base it and just show you some cool stuff that we can do from there. Thank you for watching. Okay, so now you see the finished product. And my wonderful laptop with its insane amount of stickers. Well, thank you for joining me on this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.